All right, we are live. Welcome, y'all. Welcome to the Reinvent Yourself, uh, one of the mini series that we've done. This one we're focusing on navigating change like a boss. And so, those of you new to the series, welcome. I want you to bring to mind, you know, what's the big change that you are feeling called to make in your life right now? And, and your life could be on any spectrum in shambles, and you're looking to completely reinvent, or you're really having great success in your life. And you also know that you, that there's another level for you that you're being called to transform yourself into. So as you listen to the conversation, tune into what that may be for you. And uh, with that being said, I'm excited for today's guest. Come on now, Sarah Broussard. Welcome. We've been, we had we connected, I don't know, a year ago or so. And uh, now's the divine timing that we get to do an interview. So I'm excited to have you here. I'll say a brief a snippet about Sarah. Sarah is a, a meditator, a author, and a speaker. So Sarah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be here with you. And yeah, we connected actually quite a few years ago and it just never worked out for my schedule. And this time when the email came through, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it this year. So I'm just thrilled to be here with you, Sean. It's divine because I originally reached out to you and then I have a team who helps now and they found you without going through my previous list. Wow, I forgot so then you about popped, that. Yeah, wow. you popped on my list and I was like, I know this name. Wait a minute. So I'm so excited to be having this conversation. It's the perfect time. Mm, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, I would love for you to take a moment and introduce yourself. And if you could share, I, I know we probably could share nine different snippets of your story, but if you could share some of your story, whatever feels authentic today, to give the audience a little bit of flavor of who you are and how you got here doing the work you do, and then a little bit about the work that you're doing in the world. Yeah, I would love to do that. I um, I guess where I'd love to start is really what is turning me on right now. You know, I have mm -hmm. almost a 35-year career of doing the work that I've done. Um, and really where it all started for me was, uh, it all started with the trauma <laughs> um, for me. I mean, let's just face it, you know, these uh, catalysts, these events that are catalysts in our life have the potential to turn our life in a way that will uh, change it forever in either a tremendously wonderful way or possibly not. And um, the way it happened for me was, uh, that when the event happened, I was 13, right? So in that time, I did the best I could to make it through that period of time lasted about 15 or 20 years. And what it looked wow. like, <laughs> what it looked like was no one's going to know how much shame I'm holding here for being left. My father died when I was 16. My mother left our family when I was 13. And that just, you know, brought this extraordinary shame to my life. So I just shined it up. I performed. I was like, boom, put that mask on. Don't you mm. let anyone know how desperate and sad this is inside because they might leave you too. That lasted oh about God. 20 years, right? So what happened was, you know, this life I created based on that performative um, perspective was pretty successful. <laughs> I started a business when I was 21. I met my husband at 23, two beautiful children, a home that everyone would want. I mean, it was really a pretty spectacular uh, uh, outcome. But there was a shell of existence inside of me. And how that came through was really uh, at a physical level. You know, I really, truly believe, and I want to make this really clear to your audience, because I think it's so important, that our learning comes through different ways, right? Sometimes it could be depression or sadness. Sometimes it can be heartbreaks. Sometimes, in like in my case, it was the physical aspect of my life that started to break down. So 26 years old, shingles, colds, uh, immune system just breaking down. And ultimately what really got my attention was 
bronchial pneumonia that had me in bed mm. for like three weeks. Uh, two small ones, a business. It was um, it was pretty scary. Pretty scary when you can't breathe, huh, Sean? <laughs> you know? You and, suddenly realize huh, how important breathing is. Wow. Wow. So yeah, so that's where it all started for me. And um, it just got my attention and took me on a track of learning that uh, connected me through a massage therapy, a two-year massage therapy program that really woke me up and said, oh, wait, wait, there's a connection here. I, I've energetically left this body. And somehow, some way, I've got to find a way to make this safe enough, this existence, this way of living safe enough that I can woo myself back here and heal again and be whole again. My boy, my good buddy, Will, who my best friend, he's a health, he runs a fitness company for men, but he posted a couple of days ago. He said, you can have, it was something like this. I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, you can have a lot of problems uh, but when you have a health problem, you only have one problem. So that's what that really stirred, you know, reminded me of. So, yeah. okay. So you went through, you went through some, tr some trauma, 13 to 16, mom left, your father passed away. And like, the, then there was this deep seated fear. You weren't necessarily, maybe you were present to it, maybe not, but the fear was people are going to leave you. So let me put on a mask, pretend that everything's cool perform and then you get maybe a decade plus later and, and things are going well married you have children beautiful family business but then your body starts to break down uh yeah. so then you say you you got energetically left your body mm. you talk about that a little bit like was yeah. was it in was that intentional or was that just like a subconscious coping mechanism and then like when did you start to realize that what did it look like and like how did you find your way back. Yeah. You know, I just want to address what you said as far as did I have a, an understanding of, of that mask and that performative kind of way of life? No, the answer is absolutely not until I started, you know, on a path of healing. Um, I heard or read something years and years ago, and it fascinated me about just what I said about the energy leaving. And it was about midwives in the early days when they were tending to birthing mothers and how they would have to get the mothers back in their body in order for them to birth. And, and the way they did with that was through rosemary, that they would somehow that essential oil would snap them back. But when wow. I heard that or read that, it was like, Wow, that is so powerful, right? That we think we can do it by just moving and shaking and, and like what I did basically in my early life. Was it effective? I'd say it was pretty effective. Um, it was a pretty fabulous life I'd created. But, yeah. abs but absent to that wholeness, to that understanding that it can't just be one aspect of our life, right? It can't just be the outer world. I mean, how many people, how many circumstances do we know where people's outer circumstances look pretty great, but inside they're crumbling, they're crumbling. And so that reality came to me, thank God. I mean, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because it's like, you know, okay, I got the outer thing in good shape. What if I just started bringing this together? It sounds a little simpler than it is altogether, but if that becomes the priority, you know, you and I were just talking like, Sarah, how would you like me to introduce you? And we talked about how I have meditator as my first word in my bio, right? Yeah. Meditator, author, speaker. And it's like without that, without that check-in, without that drop-in, without that inner knowing, it, it it's it's an it's a pretty vacant life I'm leading. So that for me is that is when like, you started meditating right right around that time, or when when did meditation start for you? And, and I love that it's you lead with that. It's powerful. I really resonate with that personally. 
Yeah. Um, so after I started massage therapy school, it was like just these stepping stones. And I want, I want this to be clear to people because, you know, this is what happens when we say yes to healing. Yes. To, to prioritizing self with a capital S. Um, we start to have things just, they, the teacher comes, right? The opportunity comes and we go, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's right. That's the next step. Well, the next step for me was Kundalini teacher training. So Kundalini mm. yoga is um, a very powerful yoga practice that happened for me by mistake. I, I went to a yoga studio and I was in love with Ashtanga because I was athletic and, you know, it just sort of seemed like, oh yeah, I was still sort of like, oh yeah, let me do the athletic thing. And I had set up for a training in Costa Rica with this certain teacher and the teacher had to cancel the training because of some family situation. And I already had planned for like this three month thing. And it was like, you know, I, I, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to take the next step. And Kundalini training in my area came up and I said, okay, all right, I'll do it. I'll go. Wow. And Kundalini in the ashram, everything was like, it was like nothing I had ever experienced. And you talk about being put into a situation that's so unfamiliar to you, but there's something just calling you to come back. I mean, the Sanskrit, you know, waking up at four in the morning at the ashram to meditate for two hours, you know, just on and on and on. And Kundalini yoga taught me discipline mm. and dedication. And this is really quick. What era is this for you? Like what about what years is this? Yeah, so that would have been in my early 40s. I'm 64. So okay. that was when I was in my early 40s, um, 1990, no, excuse me, 2004 was when I went. Okay. And that just set me on a course of learning that was just so extraordinary. It was like, you know, how do I say this? It, it it really lifted the veil of my trauma. I think it's important for me to say here too, Sean, that also was in therapy, you know, yeah. that ther therapy was also a huge, cognitive uh, behavioral therapy was a huge part of my healing. Um, so all of these sort of woven together, you know, the massage therapy, the yeah. uh, learning, the nutrition of you know, learning this holistic lifestyle through massage training. And then of course, coming into Kundalini yoga, which was like this whole lesson in humanology, which was just like unbelievable. And then I went to seminary after that. So yeah, a lot. I love that. Yeah. I, okay. Help me, help me connect dots here. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've, I've not personally done Kundalini like in a Kundalini class, you know, I haven't gone to a specific place. I've been aware of it for a long time. I have a client right now who's a trainer, Kundalini trainer. And okay. However, from listening to what her and others have talked about Kundalini, the 4 a.m., moving energy up, mm -hmm. uh, I did, I have gone to two years in a row now, uh, Joe Dispenza, in, the oh, in-person yeah. seven-day retreat. Yeah. You meditate, we meditate like 35 hours in a week. And one of the big things that he's teaching, he never calls it Kundalini, mm. but it has to be Kundalini. I'm confident that's what we're doing because there are a couple of days that we're, or one day we start at 4 a.m. And one of the major things that he's teaching is how to move energy from the base of your spine up, you know, spinal fluid up your spine. We're doing a lot of work around the pineal gland uh, and then like ultimately hitting, moving that energy into the pineal gland, which then acts like the way he teaches it is like a radio antenna. Mm -hmm. And, and there's this, there's a whole lot we can do from, from there, but how's that similar or different, you know, I, and I know we could talk about as a facilitator, we could talk about this for days, but just like high level, how's it similar and different? 
Well, I think you touched on it. You know, I mean, Kundalini yoga is really based around hugely around pranayama, you know? So yeah. we're, we're using all sorts of breath work and it, it it is activating the glands. I mean, that's one of the things that it's trying to do. Also, the amount of time you're meditating. So there's all sorts of indications, right? Whether you're doing a 40 day, a 90 day, a 120 day, or a thousand day, there's Oof. all sorts of indications there. Then okay. there's times, you know, three minutes, six minutes, 11 minutes, 21 minutes. You know, that was the thing that started fascinating me was like, wow, you know, this there's just so much information and i and i want to say this to you and your audience it you know this this can sound this big to people right i didn't start this big it was just yeah. like what happened was like my first 40 day and this was really something i um i started a 40 day it was what we call sat kriya and it's your arms are over your head and it's uh, soot, nom, soot, nom. So you're sucking in the abdomen and it's you're sort of spitting out that nom. So it's a lot. And I had committed to an 11 minute sat kriya, which just you talk about like just getting to it. That's an advanced practice. Wow. We went to Europe during that 40 day. And so I didn't really have access to my teacher at that time. And I got this crazy rash on the base of my spine, right at the sacrum. So much so, like without the knowledge, just kept going. And the rash got bigger and bigger until finally, you know, by that time I was back and my teacher was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, this this was heads up. You know, you should you should have contacted me because this wow. is a really strong response. And that's just, you know, an example of how potent and powerful these practices are. So that kind of woke me up to, whoa, that experience was not my teacher telling me about what can happen as much as I experienced this. And it was like, wow, this is really something. There's power so what was here. the rash about? Well, there's, there's your connection, right? That's yeah. your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual thing. It was an activation of the first chakra. Wow. Powerful. Well, we don't have to suffer like that. I guess is my point, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why we yeah, have sure. teachers. That's why we have teachers. I mean, I don't encourage anyone to go and do that. If somebody was having that response, I'd say, let's bring it down. How about we try a three minute, you know, suck Kriya. We'll keep going but we don't, we're not going to do 11 minutes right now. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So starting small is a really, really, you said it in the beginning, you know, like how do you start to bring this into your life and not huge chunks, but little turtle steps, you know, moving towards your goal. Totally. Yeah. I, when I started meditating, I, five minutes was difficult uh, for me, you know, my monkey mind in 10 minutes was workable. And then that was difficult and very not not the same practices you're doing. That's like a much more potent version. And yeah. and then like 15. And then I remember going to different events. Specifically, I, I spent a little bit of time with Michael Beckwith and Bruce Lipton mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. And we met it. And, and this is when I, my meditation practice is starting to ramp up. And um we did, I don't I don't even know, maybe a 45 minute meditation. And I remember squirming out of my seat you know I'm like my body was fighting me so hard you know like peeking my eyes open every once in a while like getting frustrated sending Michael energy like can we stop this already <laughs> yeah it's like this is so intense <laughs> then I we, get it yeah it's intense and then uh and then when I just went all in on the Dispenza event I worked through that after a couple of days and then, and then the second year it was like, oh my God, I can't wait to do some more of this. And then it was, then was, we did a four, four and a half hour meditation one morning and that was really difficult the first year. And the second year it was awesome. It was so awesome. And then, and then from there it kind of catapulted 
where it was like 10 minutes isn't enough is like I want to do an hour every morning like let's go or most mornings and that and that became then there's this whole journey that's happening but sh but like back to your point and my point it's you don't start there I didn't start there you, you no. kind of evolves it's not I guess it's not about the time either it's about what's the evolution that's wanting to happen and just being present to that evolution and honoring it when it happens and however that wants to look. Yeah. What's the title of your program? Change like a boss. Is that what it is? Change. This, yeah. This, this one's change. navigating change navigate like a boss. Change. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I want to say what that looks like to me, navigating like a boss. Yeah. Um, because as I said in the beginning, when before we we got on, I was telling you that I have a program right now called Brave Rest, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Um, the first place that I start with people, Sean, is always assessing where they are energetically, okay? Because, you know, I really believe that change is dependent on your energy. And if you know, and let's say we're in a really difficult time in our life. We want things to change. And now, because it's really tough, suffering is really hard to hold, but it is an incredible motivator to getting well, but we need it, right? So the goal really isn't to get out of suffering as much as it is in my in my opinion, to hold the suffering, okay? To drop into this place that says, yeah, things are changing because this isn't, this isn't where I want to be for the rest of my life. So what small step can I take and what level of energy do I have to commit to that? Because truthfully, in the beginning, it, it's about consistency, right? Mm. It's almost like, I don't even care what you're doing as far as the meditation goes. I'm just asking you to get there every day. You know, we have a little term, your rest nest, you know, go and find a place. And are you going to do a laying down practice? Are you going to do a sitting practice? What are you going to do that's going to hold this vessel, this body, in the most supportive way it can be held so that you can let it rest and then go from there and then start. Because really, as you and I know, once you commit to that, that practice, even seven days, if you can keep it up for, let's say three days and you go, wow, there's some sort of change. I'm feeling it. Okay. Then go on for another three days, right? And try seven days. And pick away at it like that in a way that feels really honoring and integral to where you are. Because this isn't about what you say. It's not about what I say. It's about what they're feeling and what they feel right. they can do. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Tell me, tell me this. I agree with everything you said. Small steps. It's about consistency in the beginning. Not doesn't matter what you do, hundred percent. When you say you said suffering is hard to hold, and you said hold it, mm -hmm. like for somebody going through it right now, you know, and, and it could be. I often give people clients or people in my audience that really have created like a high level success, and then something happened, and then they're yeah. they can't focus. You know, they they lose sight of the vision they start losing sleep things like that what and, and what do you mean by that can you just i think i know what you mean but what would you what do you mean hold the suffering what is that like what does that look like for somebody who's really going through it right now i really want to say feel it yeah feel it and this is the thing you know, I just don't find that one of the gifts of the intellect is holding suffering through the mind. Okay. Like I really appreciate, and maybe this is my massage, <laughs> you know, I lean on massage here because that's how I started to come back to myself was I started to experience myself through my body, the truth teller. Okay. The truth teller. And mm. 
when my body would even recognize something as, you know, and I'll typically work with people on a body scan, you know, and say, okay, how do you enter this session today? And then there's a check-in after. How do you how do you feel at the end of the session? It's all like through the body. So that we start referencing this part of us that really doesn't lie. <laughs> it doesn't have the ability to lie, you know, or override, you know, because that whole concept of overriding this, our innate wisdom gets us in trouble. So how do we hold our discomfort? How do we feel it? You know, what kind of breathing can we do? What kind of softness can I bring to this experience right now? Because soft is strong. Mm, I love soft that. is strong. And we're not talking about this. Where where do you draw the line? And I know I'm not don't maybe don't contextualize this. So it's we're talking more theoretical here, but I Sometimes I struggle with the body and and it's with and and what it mm -hmm. tells you. And because we live in this era where it's common for people to say, I feel like, you know, I feel like this. I feel like, you know, this person is lying, or I feel like th this doesn't work for me, or I feel. And it's like that's not really a feeling, it's a thought. So sometimes we conflate thoughts and feelings, you know, together, like at least in our language. Yeah. Um but like, let me, let me, okay. I have, I have an example here of a, of, yeah. of a feeling like I have two injuries right now. Like I, I just, I have a torn ligament and then I tore uh, my calf muscle just two two Fridays ago, kickboxing mm -hmm. and then jujitsu calf muscle right now hurts like hell it is like, mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, when you get a, a Charlie horse, that's what it, yeah. it won't go away. I have a Charlie horse that like won't go away. So my body and so I'm listening to that when I walk or I'm still working out, but I have to really listen to, so like the soft, I get it in that context. And then, okay. And then on the other end of it, my body does not always want to perform. Like, mm. for example, like I don't feel like getting out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. But so like, if I'm going to listen to my body in the morning, I'm going to stay in bed. You know, I'm, it's so comfy, warm, especially mm -hmm. right now. We got the windows open, there's cold air, feels good. I don't want to, I don't feel like getting out of bed. But if I honor that feeling, I'm going to get nothing accomplished in my life because I could do that forever, <laughs> probably, probably not. But mm -hmm. that, so, so there's something there that there's this trick that my system is playing on me. That's like, just stay comfortable, bro. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Just stay, just stay comfortable. You know, in fact, I put this, I put this screensaver on a couple of days ago on my, it says, um, the road to heaven feels like hell and the road to hell feels like heaven. You know, it feels like heaven to just lay and be comfy and do nothing. Or it feels like heaven to just like max out on some pizza and ice cream, you know, it doesn't always feel good to go like if my body doesn't want to go work out, but I'm like, no, I'm committed. I'm going that it doesn't feel good initially. So where, where I think you get what I'm saying. Like where, where for you, do you draw the distinction between comfort and also, but then honoring your body in a way that you're actually making progress. Let me just hold that for a minute. Yeah. So I, I just spoke on it last night and it, it's sort of this understanding that the brain, the mind needs to be teased into adventure. You know, that one of the things that I feel strongly about as somebody that totally understands what you're saying, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a early morning meditator the thing that draws me to it and didn't initially, of course, because creating the discipline is a huge thing, right? Is yeah. that the results that I get from getting out of bed and going now it 
it just, I just want to be there. It's, it's bigger than me. Yeah. So the days that it comes that I am, and it's happened lately because I've just sort of been physically with the transition of seasons or whatever, not feeling on top of my game that I lay there and I just allow, and I meditate later is gentle. And it's like knowing it's, it's like, yeah, I need this. I, I need to rest. Um, it's a, it's a big question because truthfully, initially you have to find a way to get yourself to something that you understand will have the power to heal you. Mm -hmm. Powerful. But it's not, um, I guess the memory for me comes up, the body's wisdom comes up in what happens once I'm there. And, and that's the experience I'm trying to help people get to when I'm talking about like a 40 day initiative, right? It's like, that's, that's where I need to be in order to accomplish the other things in my life that feel so incredibly important to me. That's also the reason, you know, that um, I'm playing around so much with this idea of rest right now is that yeah. we are weary. We are weary. We are weary from seeing what we see on our TVs, the state of our country, the state of our world. I mean, we energetically as a, as a society and as a world are, we're tired. We're tired. We're worn down. And I think that that's something that we have to really honor right now is that um, if there is a way to start tuning into this deeper wisdom, that deeper wisdom is not the intellect. <laughs> that is yeah. not one of the gifts of the intellect. I, I don't know. I'm going to just tell you this because I, I think it's fascinating, but when I'm, when I was studying, um, the brain, you know, one of the things that came up was this whole understanding about the right and the left brain, right? So sure. we talked about this maybe before, I don't know, but the right brain really is that creative part of us, that feminine, if you will, right? That forgiveness, that imagination, the dreaming. And the left side of the brain is, you know, the CEO, the one that's keeping us together. This is what we got to do. Um, and that pushes us and that kind of lines everything up. Also, um, we'll be not so apt to want to change. So what I learned is that the more I developed this right side of my brain, right? That creative aspect, that learning, that gentleness, that softness, the more I could affect the left side of the brain. Mm. fascinating the left side of the brain doesn't recognize the right right side of the brain the right side of the brain recognizes the left so mm. the more we develop this through our meditation through our walks in nature through anything that is feeding us at an energetic or spiritual level we have sort of this ability to balance sort of the rigidness, the sharpness, the, I call it the shitty committee. <laughs> the you shitty know? committee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the part of us that's pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah. That brutal. part hard on yourself, hard on others, that kind of thing. I hadn't heard it that way before where the, I've heard all kinds of things about left, right. I heard somebody recently and I was hesitating to say this because I don't know enough about this to know that. Yeah. So I'm not stating this as fact at all, because I can't say any more beyond what I'm going to say. This is as yeah. deep as my no knowledge plan. goes on this. But I heard one of the higher level, I think it was Dispenza, but I could be wrong about that, say that the wisdom around the traditional wisdom around the left and right br brain, it doesn't actually exist. There's not a left brain, right brain. Hmm. And, I, and I don't remember what he said after that. So I'm not stating that as a fact. I don't know more beyond that. I wish I could remember who said it and go learn more. But so going off of that, the idea of left brain, right brain, that's, fa that's fascinating to me that the left side doesn't recognize the right side and that it makes sense. Then you're developing the left side, the creative side, the flowy side, 
the graceful side as a way to tone down right. the opposite side, but the sharp right. side can't sharp rigid side doesn't have an can't. impact on the softer or right. And, and, you know, and then that switches in the body, right? So left brain CEO, right brain, imaginative, gentle flowing, then it switches. So that's where the fascination for me comes in because you know, I tend to be right side dominant, you know? So where do, where does all my stuff happen? Right side, male side. Right side, body dominant? To body dominant. Okay. So if I, if I broke my ankle, where do I break it? I break it on my right side. You know, I have mm. right neck side. So this is the whole thing when we start to study the body, you know, we have this, we can go deeper into what's happening based on the knowledge and the beliefs that we have around the body. Yeah, now this is great. I, I love what you're saying. The the war that there's like a the way I interpreted it when you I'm just going back to a minute ago where you said we're worn down. And there's like this collective worn down that I I hadn't thought about it that way. But yeah, I, I agree with that. I think going through this like crazy political season that we're that we're still in the middle of i guess by the time this airs we might have determined a president at mm -hmm. that point and who wow. knows what's going to happen over the next 3 weeks but it's it's a crazy time and then you take into the hurricanes and then there's flooding in Europe there's flooding in China Ugh. there's all these wars happening and robots and Oh, this is so much happening going on in, in yeah. the world right now. Yeah, I think we are collectively. There is some level that gets to be honored of of fatigue or being worn down. But yeah. um, I want to weave that then into you really have been focused on rest. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about talk about that a little bit. The, the idea of rest, because because this is a central focus for you right now. I think you have a group going through. Uh, yeah. like a I don't know what you call it, a rest challenge or something like, like yeah, that. Yeah, a rest initiative, you know, and, initiative. and these are all people that, you know, have absolutely done, you know, at least 40 days, sometimes many more days of consecutive practice. And um, it's fresh on my mind because we just met last night. <clears throat> and the thing about a 40 day, right, is that if you miss a day, you could be on your 39th day and you miss that day you start at day one again. That's the whole that. thing about consecutive practice. And okay. we had somebody that had been doing it for 17 days last night. And she said, day one again today, you know, missed it. And it's fascinating because particularly in this, we're really speaking about not a morning practice. So many people's minds come in and say, no, I love my morning practice. I don't feel like doing this too. Okay but this isn't a morning practice. What this practice really is about is noticing your weariness. So, you know, you're moving through your day, possibly you've gotten some news that's just huge, right? Whatever way that could be. And you think it's just news, but you notice yourself the next day with a really depleted level of energy. And you, you pay attention to that, right? And so I really encourage people to just, when they get that heads up, like, oh my, okay, this is what my body's telling me right now. Um, I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to lay down. And I'm not talking, even if that was three minutes that you got horizontal, you did the most important thing. And that is you paid attention to the inclination mm -hmm. of weariness and you got horizontal. So that's and, the, that's the goal. The goal is to pay attention is to pay attention and create awareness and like, and honor it, act on it. That's right. To really understand that the pause is like, and, and, you know, the gift I'm giving today to your audience is, um, uh, ride the, I, 
I'm sorry I have so many titles for my programs, but it's about the observer. Yeah. It's about the witness consciousness. And it's about cultivating that, right? It's in this practice, Brave Rest, it's about understanding that when you notice and when you do something about it, no matter what it is, like, okay, I'm weary, I'm going to lay down or I'm going to breathe. Let's say you're in the office and you can't actually lay down somewhere. I'm going to take this moment. I'm going to step aside from my busyness. I'm going to place my hands on my, on my legs and I'm going to do three rounds of long, deep breath. Okay. Rest is medicine. Of that. <clears throat> That is the most important thing, that you've had this pause. You didn't just roll it out and just go, oh, man, damn, let me get a cup of coffee or, you know, slap my face a couple times or whatever it might be. <laughs> it was like, yeah. okay, you know, this this is your time. Pause. This is really powerful. And, yeah. and that practice alone, I mean – That'll change your life because overriding your innate wisdom is not sustainable. Rapid aging, <laughs> bad health, guess what? We're not rested. We're not going to experience life as we hope to experience it. We're not. And I go even a step beyond that you start to be drawn to rested people because people that are rested, they're all that. They've got reserve. They've got generosity. They've got kindness. Mm, they've got room. They've got room. And that's pretty darn attractive. Because you think about the other, right? I mean, think about weariness. Think about being worn out. It's not good. It's not a good look. It's yeah, not a good yeah, look. You, it's not a good look. yeah. You're right. You don't have all that. You 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 have a, I guess, a smaller tank of kindness or a, a smaller tank of generosity. Right. Even in your energy, just your energy with another person, let alone giving whatever you're giving, but giving of your energy or giving of your presence or giving of your listening. If you're rested, you have that capacity. What do you find with people? I, and maybe we already answered it. You know, for me, we did. Cause I was asking myself as you're talking about, you know, just take three moments, you know, three minutes or so and, and get horizontal and, and honor it essentially. What, what, do, what's typically somebody who's not rested you know, then they're like, I don't have three minutes to do that. I got to go, you know, I got a to-do list that I got to get to today. I can't, can't give three minutes. Are you crazy? It's so uncomfortable. Maybe like I described earlier where I was squirmy in the Beckwith event when we we're meditating, but what do you say to somebody who's their, their system or their, their mind is fighting, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of just slowing it down and taking a few minutes for themselves? Oh, you know what I'd say? I'd say, be kind to yourself. You know, these habits we've created to get away from our trauma, to get away from these feelings that feel really sharp and heavy and hurtful. Um, you know, that's how your ego has protected you for a long time. Get busy so you don't have to feel this. Yeah. And I... You know, I have a different way of, I, I've often heard, you know, people say, you know, let's get rid of the ego. Well, no, no, no. The ego has protected you and that's its job, right? Is to keep it, keep you safe. But, yeah. you know, to work with your mind in a way that allows this precious resource, the ego, to really come into an understanding that, yeah, I need you. We're going to reframe this a bit, okay? This is the right brain, left brain. We're going to reframe this. I know, I get you. Like just noticing that inclination, like I, I'm doing this meditation. I'm doing the meditation along with those guys and my um, my audio is on Spotify. I, I put this whole thing on Spotify 
So I'm picking up my phone, in fact, very early in the morning. And I'm like, oh, there's my messages. Oh, there's my email. Oh, there's everything there at five in the morning I can go into. Yeah. And I and I notice, right, Sean? So just I'd say that to your to your people is just noticing like, oh, look at me. I want to, I want to go into my messages or my Instagram or whatever it might be, but I'm going to hold, I'm going to, I'm going to hold and not do that this time. Okay. And see how it feels. And, and it's really just about the noticing, isn't it? It's just about the noticing, like, look at me, what I'm doing. Okay. And then be generous enough to say, we're going to try something different here because we know what this outcome is. This is what we do every single day. Yeah, it's we so know, predictable. Right. We do this. Yeah. We're trained in this. We know. And, oh, guess what? I still have a lot of, ugh. I have a lot of ick in me and that's not changing it. So maybe we could try something a little different today. I like that. You know what's worked for me in those moments? Because I get that it's so strong sometimes and it just depending on maybe how much I've been on social media or not. If I'm not on there, then I have no desire to be on there. And then we just released this book a couple of days ago. And so I've been on social media promoting this book. And then it's just like a little dose of it just spikes this desire to get back on, check it again, check it again, check it again. And I'm like walking myself in my mind as you're talking about it. Okay. I got the notification, but I, it, I, I'm going to meditate. I'm actually pulling up a meditation track. And now here's this desire to, there's a notification. Who, who is it? what they say? I got to handle that. For me, sometimes the awareness isn't enough, like, but it's like 99% there. And I don't, it's taken me a while to realize that, that the awareness is 90 is close. I'm actually really close to having a breakthrough. And the, and, but then there's this like FOMO sticks, sticks to me. It's mm -hmm. like, then I'm thinking it's like a little bit of my brain is like, yeah, dude, but you've got this notification over here, you know, just mm -hmm. check it out. You know, it's like just a second, it won't take long. And if I, um, if I go into that feeling, I think it's probably along the lines of what you were talking about earlier is like, if I go into the feeling of that pool and I just go right into it, like, what is that? What's the FOMO? Like, instead of letting the FOMO kick my ass or being afraid of the FOMO, I just go, I just question it. And like, what is that? Yeah. Where am I? What, what am I actually feeling? What does that mean? What's the thought? And I go, and then it's like really quick is it'll disappear it'll go away. But if I don't go all the way into it, then it kicks back up again later. Like I haven't resolved it. And then it just compounds. Yeah. What about just like, I find it the curiosity. It's like, Oh, look at you. You're curious <laughs> about that. Aren't you like playful? Right? Yeah. Look, at you. look what you're doing. And I love that. I, I, I kind of get this you know, when you have traction under you and you're, you're feeling yourself in a place of like change, like, wow, things really do feel different. Like that, what I revert to in situations like that is this mantra that says the alternative sucks. The alternative sucks. I've been doing this, right? I've been, I've been going to it. I've been following those inclinations, you know, my mind telling me, oh, you better get there. You're talking about FOMO or, you know, something's going to happen. You didn't answer that comment. People are going to think you're better or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So he doesn't care it, about his people. You don't care about your people. You know, <laughs> all that's that's the shitty committee. That's them just saying, you know, whoa, man. So I I love the curiosity playful, teasing, kind of like, okay, but I bet you anything, Sarah, that if you just waited until after you did your meditation to go in there, guess what? It's going to be there too. So, and now what I find, Sean, is, and especially when we're launching things, right? Of course. I mean, we get it. When we're launching things, there's a big draw to wanting to see what's going on. But what I find now is with the curiosity, it's like, look at you, look what you're doing. And then I forget. 
then I forget yeah. it. Yeah. It's like I I've done my meditation. It's like, hey, maybe you should check in on that. It's like, oh gosh, wow. So, you know, this whole process, like this neuroplasticity, right? There's another brain term, you know, just yeah. starting to myelinate the brain in a different way. And when we do that, when we start working with these uh, interesting ways of dealing with it, which, you know, curiosity is a beautiful example, we start to understand that, yeah, we can do things differently. We can make change. I, I would say get away from the self-criticism, like, you know, the rigid. I mean, even give in sometimes. If you give in to it, then say, okay, but we're going to check in with our body. We're going to check in and see how that really felt overall. And most times it's like, it didn't do what I was hoping it would do. Totally. It's like that screenshot I have. It's like the path to heaven feels like hell or the path to hell feels like heaven. Yeah. It's like yeah. it feels good in the moment to avoid or to follow the instinct to go check the notification. But then afterward, when you skipped your whatever it was that you skipped, that that is really good for you or that would be good for you, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't. Right. It just doesn't. It's like you said, we know that path. We know where that takes us from familiar. So familiar with that. That's right. What tell me, tell me this too, about the, like, let's say with the 40 day example, I think discipline is really important. And, and you could be really rigid about discipline too. And I don't think that discipline has to be rigid. I think there can be, uh, I think that discipline can be a pathway to freedom and it does, it's not a, it's not this negative like crack the whip on your yourself kind of thing and okay but if i'm just starting out and i'm gonna sometimes i find that i'll have a client that if in their mind if they're just starting out or they have a long way to go they don't want to declare or make a big commitment to their future like they don't want to declare a specific result and they don't want to, they don't want to commit to something because they're afraid, you know, they're like, let me just see it. Let me just do one day. Let's just see how one day goes. Let me just start small, something like that because of that fear. Okay. But then we're saying, let's, let's actually commit to a 40 day and let's start with 40 day. And if you get to 39, uh, you got to, you get start over on 39. If you don't do day 40, uh, What's the value of going all the way to 40? And if you miss it, you know, I'm, I'm certain if you got to 39 days, a lot's going to come up. Like, man, I was so close, maybe hard on yourself. So what's the value of taking that on and restarting and going all the way to 40? If 40 yeah. were the goal, just with that one example. Well, there's indications for these these. Uh, amounts of time, right? But let's put that aside. Yeah. The the goal that I have with clients is for them to have an experience, period. Yeah. So, you know, it it really, I can talk to them, I can work with them, you can talk to them, you can work with them, you can suggest all sorts of wonderful practices. But until they actually have an experience of what that feels like, mm -hmm. there's nothing there. You know, I'll often say that when clients say, oh, God, that's such good information. It's like, yeah, and it's bullshit. It's what just, you just info. Heard, it's just concept. It's just info. Right. Yeah. Until it's yours, it's nothing. Okay. And uh, let's say that person that had 39 days, <laughs> guess what? They've had a pretty profound experience. Yeah, totally. They've got something to talk about right there. They got yeah. a lot of info that they're going to be able to feed back. And that's when we can do something for these people. Okay. Now they've got something to talk about. It's not just us telling them about this experience. They're like, whoa. Yeah. And in most cases, people are like, no problem. I'll start again tomorrow. You kidding me? I can't even believe that I forgot. And it, it, and it, you'll hear it time and time again, right? It's like, I mean, I was just having tea with my mother and 
and it was gone. What happened? And that's the thing. That's the trickiness. I always say that's the ego's last chance of saying, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, you're not going to do this. You're not going to change these habits, you know? Yeah. And it's just something very simple and it's just gone out of your mind. And it's like, you wake up the next day and go, oh no, oh my God, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And even that is fascinating because all the things you think, well, maybe if I, did it at five in the morning. Maybe I'll, you know, that'll count as my day. It's just funny to watch the brain just try to uh, wrangle that and make sense of it and and trick trick itself, you know. So, I I think the value of consistent day practice is just unbelievable because the experiences will show up as physical, as emotional, as mental, as spiritual. Trees look brighter. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. hard to even explain. I know for me, it was like walking out of a room one day and it was like, how could those trees look greener? How could those leaves look greener? It's like, it, it brightens the, I, I, I mean, I know it sort of sounds weird because it's my experience, not, not somebody else's, but it's pretty, pretty remarkable. It doesn't sound weird to me. I opened up the curtains this morning, the the side one, there's these big trees right next to the windows that was a huge window off the dining room. And the trees were green and orange. It was this bright oh. orange and yellow. And I hadn't seen it yet. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> when did that happen? Probably yeah. happened a while ago, but I just saw it this morning. It was like, wow, wow. It's still in my mind. Yeah. You know, here... Here, here's like, here's what I hear you say, because like, okay, let's say I get there's a way bigger context to why we do a 40 day practice. So I'm just using that as an example. But let's say we let's say we we're gonna do the 40 days, you get to day 39, like you start out, it's like, this is all about 40 days. Hmm. Maybe the mind says that. And then you get to 39 days. And it's like, Oh, shit, I failed, or I didn't do it, or I suck or whatever. And then I, th I, I think you're like, you're right. There's a lot to talk about and depending on the person, but now there's the experience of whatever that means to you that you didn't make the 40 days. And now it's not about the 40 days. It's not about that at all. Got to let that go for now and figure out what is this about? What's this here to teach me? I went 39 out of 40 days and now I'm being, now I'm beating myself up. Let's take that on because I don't get yeah. to live my life where I'm hard on myself and beat myself up and say I suck or whatever I say to myself. So like, perhaps that was actually the perfect, that was the destination was to get to that experience and take that on. And let's actually take it on. Let's let go of the 40 days really quickly and take that on. Be aware of it, like you said, and then let's start, now let's start over and possibly we resolved something. And now we go, and now it's a new journey. That's the way yeah. I, that's the way I heard it when you described it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I mean, and again, we don't know what it will be for any given person. Right. But right. we do know they will have an experience. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 We're on the same page about that. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, th man, this has been awesome. I, I just glanced down and it was like, wow, we've been chatting for quite a while. This is great. <laughs> I, I could, yeah. I want to definitely do this again with you. We have so much oh. to talk about. I love, I love hanging out with you, Sean. It's great. Really. Likewise. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is my pleasure. Um, we started in a similar place. Actually, I, I forget this about my journey, but the first, I guess, step toward a career, if you will, when I got out of the military in 2003 was massage therapy school. Wow. Yeah. It's it's wild. I for, I just forget, and then you bring it up, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I did that, and that was my first experience of. We got a, the teacher was an OG gangster in the energy field. He he passed away, but he was like in his late 80s at that point, and he was still teaching. And you know, we learned about energy and got to see uh. him heal people with his hands. And I was like, I never seen. I just came out of the military. Like, we're not doing wow. this. What are you doing? It was a cool opening. It wasn't a path. It wasn't the career. Uh, but it was a big opening. So it's fun that you we both started in that similar way. Yeah. But yeah. I love it. Let me say this. I, I want to make sure that 
anyone listening that wants to connect with you and come into your world that they get that opportunity. So when I send this out, I'll link the gift that you're giving, but can you take a moment you. just to talk about what the gift is? Yeah. I mean, it, it really backs up to what we've been talking about and how do we connect uh, more deeply to that part of us, the witness consciousness, that part that we can trust, right? That inner knowing. Yeah. Um, and I think all of what we've we've spoken about today, you know, just dropping in, being aware of what you're experiencing at any given time and either turning towards it or turning away from it, but but looking, but noticing. And um, Ride the Storm is a part of my book that I wrote where are you the storm? You know, are you going to be when a storm comes? Are you going to be in the storm or are you going to be the observer of the storm? Mm, and like that. that's, that's a big, big concept. And it's where I start with people always is let's really get you into a place where you can start to be the observer um, of your life. It's like watching a movie of your life when you cultivate that aspect of yourself. That's a beautiful example. And so I'll link the gift and then just as an as a bonus, as an addition, because I want to read your book too. The book is Ride the Storm. Where where can the book, they get the book? The book is Inside a Guide to the Resources Within. Okay. And that's where you get your books, Amazon, wherever. This is my Inside book. a Guide to the Resources Within. Inside a guide to the resources within. Yeah, I'm doing a book study on it right now. So that's why I've got all this gizmo in it. But yeah. Cool. Amazon. Great. You guys go check that out too. That yeah, sounds like a great you. book. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I'm super grateful we got, we got, it was again, this is the perfect timing, divine timing that we connected uh, right Sean. now at this yeah. point in the, where we are in the world. So yeah. I'm super grateful you came on. Thank you. And um, I'd love to do it again. Yeah. I'll see you again soon. All right. All right. That sounds great. All right. Farewell. Take care. And everybody Bye, at home, guys. listen, you made it to this point in the interview. Yeah. Clearly something opened up for you. So go to, before you move on, like be aware to what did come up to you. And if it feels like the right action for you, then go grab the gift and jump in before you move on. Right and on. we'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye. All right. Farewell. Bye-bye.